are you today, Chris? Uh, I'm well. Can you hear me? Got you now, Chris. Welcome. Uh, okay, good. Thanks. All right. So uh, was there anything you wanted to share on your screen today or you uh, just wanted Yeah, to there's a there's here. Yeah, actually, I think. Uh... The share screen. So okay. uh, those of you that, that don't know Chris Carolyn, uh, his handles the spiral calendar. Uh, he's the winner of the Charles H. Dow Award for his book on uh, lunar cycles. And uh, Chris has uh, some interesting things to say about what's coming up here on the weekend. And, you know, uh, I was influenced by you, Chris, uh, with your writings back in the 70s and 80s uh, to start paying attention to these uh, lunar cycles. So it's your responsibility that people call me a lunatic. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, that, you know, I hope maybe at the end of the day, that'll be an honorific. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, your, uh, your tweet was very interesting. Uh, I was, I wasn't aware of the eclipse coming up this weekend, but, uh, your tweet said financial panics are eclipse cycles, midlife crisis. So we've gone through this before, and this could be a repeat. Is that the implication? Well, um, I, I there was a head fake in that tweet um, because okay. the midlife crisis isn't this eclipse; it's uh, next year. But I, okay. I, I want to talk about both eclipses. And before I do, though, I, I thought, um, and a good segue from the conversation you were having about the Japanese yen and what's going on these days, because yeah. um, I look at the market. It, it there's two things I'm interested in: liquidity and sentiment. So. The, the eclipses will be the sentiment discussion, but let's just touch on liquidity a minute because it's what's okay. pushing everything around. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, I was just kind of confused because you hear people say, well, uh, the lower dollar is, is bullish for stocks. Uh, but then at the same time, they would say that, uh, you know, the, the, the dollar rising against the yen is bullish for stocks. So I would ask, well, what is it? Are we rooting for a higher dollar or a lower dollar? Well, why not net out the two components? Take the uh, the move in the in the yen and subtract the move in in the in the dollar index and see where we're at. And that's what I call the FX weather vane. Um, and those are the daily bars. You can do it intraday, and and to me, it's just a good measure of liquidity. Uh, and we you can see things were very tight. Um, I, I use run a seven calendar day moving average on it. Things were tight in February when stocks were getting crushed. And then uh, as soon as the yen collapse happened, the indicator goes wildly bullish and, and we see stocks respond. And now more craziness, some very negative readings earlier in the week. And then today with the, with the yen uh, just getting hammered, um, right. once again, uh, you know, liquidity flows in and things look good. So, um, you know, I just did this by eyeball, but uh, David Aronson, who's written a couple of books on technical analysis, you know, he ran this through its paces and and kind of came back and said, this is a hell of an indicator. So okay. it's- uh, and, and you uh, you also, uh, I started following the WAN um, uh, after our last interview because uh uh, you were talking about correlations. Were you surprised that the yen led it, and then all of a sudden we had this explosion in USD one? And uh, it looks like well, I, I mean, the, you know, the, the the Chinese have to preserve their export markets. I mean, it, it looks right. like now everybody's looking at the yen and, and saying we have to do the same thing and and not lose our exports. So, you know, this is going to come to a head, and you know, your your previous. Uh, uh, commenters are just so right on the money that that uh, you know people are going to get carried carried out uh, if if they're not careful with these massive moves. But I mean, it looks like the market's going to force the Japanese, you know, to to back down. And 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 it was exactly right. It's it's bonds or currency. Which market do they want to save? Well, yeah. they're they're going to have to make the decision to save their currency, and the market's going to force them to it. But at what level? I don't know. 140, 150, who knows? Yeah, so now the U.S. Uh, exporters, you're starting to hear 
um, you know, how they're taking a hit to earnings uh, because of the strong dollar. And, yeah, you know, there will be no that. winners. There will be no winners. OK. All right. Let's Our, move on to sentiment here and eclipses and and things. Uh, I published this chart 30 years ago <laughs> in the wow. book. Yeah. And it's forecasting a, a, a major event next year. Now, when I I don't stick by this forecast anymore because it was looking for a top in June of 23. And you, anybody who's read the spiral calendar knows the original observation of why 29 and 87 were so similar is that the distance in time is the square root of a Fibonacci number, the 29th number in the series. And it's precise, literally within hours. So at this time, I thought, okay, we have this relationship and they are then looking at a spiral relationship out in June 23, top to top. But what I figured out since in 30 years is that the important relationship is crash to crash, not top to top. So uh, okay. here's the revised forecast uh, measuring from the two crash lows, which gives you August of uh, next year, third week, roughly. Okay. Now, What's really interesting here in the 30 years is that I found what the sort of the connection that drives these, and, and that's eclipse cycles. So let's do a, a quick uh, primer on eclipses. And, you know, Saros, very similar eclipses happen every 18 years, and that's called a Saros cycle. And, you know, we think of cycles as being infinite. But they're not. Uh, cycles have beginning and they have endings. They have midpoints. And in the case of Asaros, the very first eclipses are partial eclipses. And then they begin to graze the poles. And in the middle of their lifespan, they're hitting the center of the Earth. And then they proceed uh, up to the other pole. And, and half of the uh, Saros cycles go south to north. The other go north to south. So we could act plot. So here are all the eclipse cycles plotted by their series number. And so you can see any specific Saros cycle here. It starts around 400 AD, and it's, it's going to go for over 1,000 years. And, and in the middle, those, those uh, um, shadows are going to be crossing the center of the Earth. So let's zoom in and see where these years of those panics. Oh, let me just give you a little yeah, terminology here. OK. Uh, eclipse gamma, that is just a number that tells you where the shadow falls on the Earth. So a, a gamma of zero is, is a central eclipse. And this started 20 plus years ago in, in an email exchange with Arch Crawford. And he said, oh, well, yes. the certain eclipse is important because Pluto is doing a headstand that day, that type of thing. And I, <laughs> and I said, well, no, if eclipses matter, it's the ones that are most perfectly aligned that should be the important ones. Uh, and the other, the other number here to watch, the INEX, that is the average time distance between Saros cycles. So similar Saros have, uh, adjacent Saros have, have similar uh, eclipses. All right, here's the meat of the matter. That same chart now zoomed in, each of these dots is an eclipse. Uh, you know, this was the eclipse close to the crash of 1987. 58 years earlier was 29. Right. 36 years, 58 years is two times the INEX because it jumps uh, up from. And now this is 36 years, gives you the panic of July of 1893. Another 36 brings you to the October 1857, the massive global crash. Yeah. There was a Civil panic War. in Hamburg. Germany in October 1799. So this relationship, 58 years, October to October, that, that's repeated exactly in, in the 20th century. You can go 36 years here, and, and there was a panic on the European continent in September 1763. So, so but actually, what you see is these eclipse cycles, after they pass their midpoint, these triangles are the center eclipse, literally the ones passing the center of the shadow those seem to generate this uh, issue. Now, uh, so um, the specifics of the measurements are in the market. They follow the spiral calendar, not the eclipse. So in other words, right. 
it, it, it's exact in the 58 year, but for the 36 year, the spiral calendar is three months shorter. So, you know, next year the eclipse is due in the fall, but the low should come in August. I don't think it's going to be a crash. And like 1893, you know, crashes are an October event. And, uh, but when they happen in the summer, it's, it's a different look to it. And that's what 1893 was. Right. Whereas it gets more of a persistent decline rather than compressed right. in a few days. Yeah. Something like okay. 1907. I mean, the top could very well be in place, most likely is, although not in the end terms. Right. And, and so I'm thinking we've got this grinding bear market back and forth. Right. Ridiculous. And an eventual bottom in August of 23. Okay, now here's the same, all the eclipses of 2000, 2100 years plotted by their gamma numbers. And you can see that there are obvious cycles in here. And it's, it's but now let's just look at those three Saro series where all those panics resided on. And here, 130, 132, 134, uh, the odd numbered Saros are, are the ones moving from north to south. These are south to north. So here you can see after the zero on 130, you get panic, 36 years panic. Then it jumps to the next Saros, that's 58 years. Then 36, then 36, then 58. Now 36 brings us to the 2023. Okay. Uh, it's, it's fascinating to me that these are all, you know, something that's wondered scientists, how come all the civilizations in the world formed near the 30th parallel? And they'll always tell you it's about climate and growth and whatever. But um, I got to think that there's something else in, <laughs> in latitudes and human development, but, but that's okay. speculation. So, well, what do you think it is? Why, why do you think that is? Oh, I uh, think, I mean, we, we, our children of gravity. I mean, this is getting to who we are. Um, you know, I, I think he, life is our parents are our father time and mother gravity. Uh, and like uh, we're, we're what they drew on this. We're the pattern. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about today's eclipse or, or this weekend's eclipse. I do, okay. I've done work in the last few years with tides in short term and using the tides to measure um, emotions. So um, we're going to look at a series of charts showing uh, the short term tides at each of these somewhat panicky type lows of the last couple of years. Um, so let's, let's run through them. Now, I have uh, I my title data I get from from the aeronautics uh, website but I um I transform it into the two daily tides you know there's there's two tides each day so right. what we're looking high at and low is, pardon me high and low tide right so but what we're looking at is the drop in feet of each of the day's tides so down here these numbers are large swings in tides and 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 the top are the smaller swings, high to low. So these are the full moons and new moon, spring tides. These are neat tides up top. What you see here on the, on the 18 low was the price, you know, bottomed at the tidal extreme, turned around. Interesting. Here's the that's when, uh, that, that's when Paul flipped and sang Kumbaya with uh, Bernanke and yeah. Yellen. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the March 20 low. Now this was interesting because um, the actual VIX low, the VIX extreme was about a week before or, or well ahead of the price low. It didn't really, and that's almost maybe what we're seeing right here. Here's the October 20 low right in at, at the, here's uh, September 20. It was really a double bottom, tidal extreme, tidal extreme. And this was last December, which was an eclipse. The eclipse was on the weekend, and we, we make a price low, and then we got a retest on Friday, and then off to the races. And that brings us to here. And uh, what I had said uh, on, on my website update Sunday was looking for a bottom Thursday or Friday. Uh, given the yen, it, 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 we may be already done here. 
uh, although I we still could get another washout in climax. But um, uh, that's where we're at with this eclipse. And it, okay, so this is not a. It, we can go back, and I could show you. So yeah, this weekend's eclipse is down here. This dot down here. This is you know, and it's it's going to graze the South Pole. So. All right. That's my sentiment story. What else do you want to talk about? All right. Well, uh, really interesting, Chris, uh, that, you know, I, I'd have to, I'm going to have to watch this again to uh, <laughs> absorb it all. And, uh, you know, when you use the tides and uh, the spiral calendar in conjunction, uh, is it giving you any kind of tell in the big uh, picture of rates here uh, is this a uh, major turn in the cycle uh, the end of uh, you know it looks like we're almost having a sovereign debt crisis here uh, do you have a view on yields and rates and the fed based upon your work well um, I, I mean the big view was the was the forecast made in january of 20 that march would be the end of the uh, bull market and bonds and and the spiral okay. calendar was looking for March 30 and it 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 was March 9th but so um you know that the bonds Close are enough done. For government work yeah and uh <laughs> so uh, you know I don't have sh you know short term here is I don't I don't see I mean we're almost uh the central banks are kind of driving the bus here, I think, in terms of right. timing. It's it's going to be about when they break and when they panic, et cetera. And uh, anything, you know, the whole world fell in love with the uh, commodities. They've been well rewarded with energy and miners. And uh, the, the, the gold, the miners came apart last week. Uh, wondering what your view is on um, dollar hedges like gold that you probably don't need when the, the dollar's doing what it's doing. But uh, do you see any kind of point where uh, people need to diversify out of the dollar? Well, yeah, let me find a, see if I can get a, uh, not sure how to change what screen I'm sharing. Oh, you, you uh, uh, stop the share oh, yeah, and okay. start Here the share. Now we got to see where I'm going. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't, what What are you seeing now? You... I'm still seeing the uh, tides chart. Okay. All right. So. Uh, yeah, I, I have go. two. Now you have your screen up. Transfer over to the other, but I guess I can't do that. Yeah, you have your screen up now, and I see the gold right there. And right in the oh, middle. Oh, so we yeah. have it. We have All it right. now. Well, yeah, this is, you know, gold inverted versus um, dollar yen. Right. And here, let me move it up. Could enlarge this... it. Okay. And, you know, here, this just explains why gold can go down while we have inflation, because uh, the inflation is all in the, in the yen collapse. Right. Um, you know these can these can still get wider while while gold falls and have inflation. Uh, so, you know this yeah. the strong dollar is is makes it harder for uh, U.S. participants to essentially play the inflation. Um, and and you know, literally outside my window right now there are are seven houses under construction within. 300 yards of me uh, what are going to be the uh um mortgage rates when they try to sell those nobody knows very interesting i mean there's so much uncertainty now right well you never know uh if you have faith till you need it exactly well said Dave. and and in your work and you know not just in life and you know uh what it, one excellent tutorial for people um that are interested in this type of analysis, Chris, I think you're uh, best of breed, as they say in the business, when it comes to um, astronomical type analysis and title. And uh, you've inspired a lot of people over the years to look at things besides just candlesticks and see that the universe uh, has a rhythm and whoever created it was a mathematician. Um, so, you know, I really enjoyed 
today, Chris, and uh, for people that want to follow you, uh, I know on Twitter, you know, they could follow you at the Spiral Calendar. Yeah, at, at, at Spiral Cal, and my, my website is spiralcalendar.com. Yeah, just, I mean, a, a little background. My website, it, I, you know, I offer technical analysis, and yeah. it's not a trading service, and, and there are lots of those out there. You know, I'm just original technical analysis work you won't find anywhere else. Um, and it's a value to some people. It's not for others. It's not for everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I always have an original perspective. Okay. So uh, uh, from, uh, from original perspective to uh, a lot of cycles that you've lived through and all the research you've done, um, you know, give Chris a look. And it'll, it'll broaden your perspective because uh, Chris looks at the, the markets, although he can break out a microscope, the guy uses a telescope. In fact, it's like the Hubble. <laughs> so thank you, Chris, for taking time out of your day and uh, educating our community about things that are unconventional. You're very welcome, Dale, and thank you very much. All right, everyone. Chris Carolyn, check him out. And uh, I think you're going to be paying attention to August of next year. Mark your calendar. Thank you, Chris. Uh, let's do it again and not wait for, you know, another, so, uh, another good. eclipse. Okay, sounds Chris. Good. All right. So that's a wrap, everyone. Good hunting. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. You could join the team in 20 minutes on the morning edge. Hope you enjoyed, Chris. I know I did. Good luck, everyone. Adios. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.